waiting silence. Then a shout from one of the women, here it is. The bathhouse fills with clapping. NASA sees his new light sparkling out before him. The women come to apologize, we're so sorry we didn't trust you. We just knew that you'd taken that girl. They kept talking about how they suspected him. And begging his forgiveness. Finally he replies. I am much more guilty than anyone has thought or said. I am the worst person in the world. What you have said is only a hundredth of what I've actually done. Don't ask my pardon. You don't know me. No one knows me. God has hidden my sneakiness. Satan taught me tricks, but after a time, those became easy, and I taught Satan some new variations. God saw what I did, but chose not to publicly reveal my sin. And now, I am sewn back into wholeness. Whatever I've done, now is not done. Whatever obedience I didn't do, now I did. Pure, noble, free, like a cypress. Like a lily, is how I suddenly am. I said, help me. Oh no. And that oh no, became a road let down in my well. I climbed out to stand here in the sun. One moment I was at the bottom of a dang, fearful narrowness, and the next. I am not contained by this universe. If every tip of every hair on me could speak, I still couldn't say my gratitude. I-64 In the middle of these streets and gardens, I stand and say and say again, and it's all I say. I wish everyone could know what I know. Moses and the Shepherd. Moses heard a shepherd on the road praying. God, where are you? I want to help you, to fix your shoes and comb your hair. I want to wash your clothes and kick the lice off. I want to bring you milk to kiss your little hands and feet when it's time for you to go to bed. I want to sweep your room and keep it neat. God, my sheep and goats are yours. All I can say, remembering you, is a and off. Moses could stand it no longer. Who are you talking to? The one who made us. And made the earth and made the sky. Don't talk about shoes and socks with God. And what's this with your little hands and feet? Such blasphemous familiarity sounds like you're chatting with your uncle. Only something that grows needs milk. Only someone with feet needs shoes. Not God, even if you meant God's human representatives. As when God said, I was sick, and you did not visit me, even then this tone would be foolish and irreverent. Use appropriate terms. Fatima is a fine name for a woman, but if you call a man Fatima, it's an insult. Body and birth language are right for us on this side of the river, but not for addressing the origin, not for Allah. Is five. The shepherd repented and tore his clothes inside and wandered out into the desert. A sudden revelation came then to Moses. God's voice. You have separated me from one of my own. Did you come as a prophet to unite, or to sever? I have given each being a separate and unique way of seeing and knowing and saying that knowledge. What seems wrong to you is right for him. What is poison to one is honey to someone else. Purity and impurity, sloth and diligence in worship, these mean nothing to me. I am apart from all that. Ways of worshipping are not to be ranked as better or worse than one another. Hindus do Hindu things. The Dravidian Muslims in India do what they do. It's all praise, and it's all right. It's 
not any that's glorified in acts of worship. It's the worshippers. I don't hear the words they say. I look inside at the humility. That broken open lowliness is the reality, not the language. Forget phraseology. I want burning, burning. Be friends with your burning. Burn up your thinking and your forms of expression. Moses, those who pay attention to ways of behaving and speaking are one sort. Lovers who burn are another. Don't impose a property tax on a burned out village. Don't scold a lover. Good, wrong, the way he talks is better than a hundred. Z66. Right, ways of others. Inside the Kaaba it doesn't matter which direction you point your prayer rug. The ocean diver doesn't need snowshoes. The love religion has no code or doctrine. Only God. So the ruby has nothing engraved on it. It doesn't need markings. God began speaking deeper mysteries to Moses. Vision and words, which cannot be recorded here, poured into and through him. He left himself and came back. He went to eternity and came back here. Many times this happened. It's foolish of me to try and say this. If I did say it, it would uproot our human intelligences. It would shatter all writing pens. Moses ran after the shepherd. He followed the bewildered footprints, in one place moving straight like a castle across a chessboard. In another, sideways, like a bishop. Now surging like a wave cresting, now sliding down like a fish, with always his feet making geomancy symbols in the sand, recording his wandering state with him. Moses finally caught up. I was wrong. God has revealed to me that there are no rules for worship. Say whatever and however your loving tells you to. Your sweet blasphemy is the truest devotion. Through you a whole world is free. Z67. Loosen your tongue and don't worry what comes out. It's all the light of the spirit. The shepherd replied, Moses, Moses, I've gone beyond even that. You applied the whip and my horse shied and jumped out of itself. The divine nature and my human nature came together. Bless your scolding hand and your arm. I can't say what has happened. What I'm saying now is not my real condition. It can't be said. The shepherd grew quiet. When you look in a mirror, you see yourself, not the state of the mirror. The flute player puts breath into a flute, and he makes the music. Not the flute, the flute player. Whenever you speak praise or thanksgiving to God, it's always like this dear shepherd's simplicity. When you eventually see through the veils to how things really are, you will keep saying again and again, this is certainly Ryan like we thought it was. Joy is sudden disappointment. Whatever comes, comes from a need, a sore distress, a hurting want. Mary's pain made the baby Jesus. Her womb opened its lips and spoke the word. I-68. Every part of you has a secret language. Your hands and your feet say what you've done. And every need brings in what's needed. Pain bears its care like a child. Having nothing produces provisions. Ask a difficult question, and the marvelous answer appears. Build a ship, and there'll be water to float it. The tender throated infant cries and milk drips from the mother's breast. Be thirsty for the ultimate water, and then be ready for what will come pouring from the spring. A village woman once was walking by Muhammad. She thought he was just an ordinary illiterate. 
she didn't believe that he was a prophet. She was carrying a two-month-old baby. As she came near Muhammad, the baby turned and said, Peace be with you, Messenger of God. The mother cried out, surprised and angry, What are you saying, and how can you suddenly talk? The child replied, God taught me first, and then Gabriel. Who is this Gabriel? I don't see anyone. He is above your head, mother. Turn around, he has been telling me many things. Do you really see him? Yes. He is continually delivering me from this degraded state into sublimity. 69. Muhammad then asked the child, What is your name? Abdul Aziz, the servant of God, but this family thinks I am concerned with world energies. I am as free of that as the truth of your prophecy is. So the little one spoke, and the mother took in a fragrance that let her surrender to that state. When God gives this knowing, inanimate stones, plants, animals, everything, fills with unfolding significance. The fish and the birds become protectors. Remember the incident of Muhammad and the eagle. It happened that as he was listening to this inspired baby, he heard a voice calling him to prayer. He asked for Waddle to perform ablutions. He washed his hands and feet, and just as he reached for his boot, an eagle snatched it away. The boot turned upside down as it lifted, and a poisonous snake dropped out. The eagle circled and brought the boot back, saying, My helpless reverence for you made this necessary. Anyone who acts this presumptuously for a legalistic reason should be punished. Muhammad thanked the eagle, and said, What I thought was greatness was really love. You took away my grief, and I was grieved. God has shown me everything, but at that moment I was preoccupied within myself. The eagle, the chosen one, any clarity I have, comes from you. This spreading radiance of a true human being has great importance. Look carefully around you and recognize the luminosity of souls. Sit beside those who draw you to that. Learn from this evil story that when misfortune comes, you must quickly praise. Others may be saying, oh no, but you will be opening out like a world losing itself petal by petal. Someone once asked a great shake what Susan was. The feeling of joy when sudden disappointment comes. The eagle carries off Muhammad's food and saves him from snakebite. Don't grieve for what doesn't come. Some things that don't happen keep disasters from happening. If the beloved is everywhere, the lover is a veil, but when living itself becomes a friend, lovers disappear. Story Water A story is like water that you heat for your bath. It takes messages between the fire and your skin. It lets them meet, and it cleans you. 1. 71 very few can sit down in the middle of the fire itself like a salamander or Abraham. We need intermediaries. A feeling of fullness comes, but usually it takes some bread to bring in. Beauty surrounds us, but usually we need to be walking in a garden to know it. The body itself is a screen to shield and partially reveal the light that's blazing inside your presence. Water, stories, the body, all the things we do, are mediums that hide and show what's hidden. Study them, and enjoy this being washed with a secret we sometimes know, and then not. 172 
C6B4 Rough Metaphors. More teaching stories. On roughness. Some of Lumi's metaphors are rough, raw, and unacceptable to refined tastes. When Reynold Nicholson translated the Mathmuri into English in the 192 OS, he chose to render some passages into Latin, supposing that anyone who knew enough Latin to read them would be properly shielded from taint. Lumi uses anything human beings do, no matter how scandalous or cruel or silly, as a lens to examine soul growth. A board crafted to serve as a flange, allowing a donkey penis to enter a woman's vagina just to the point of her pleasure but not far enough to harm her, becomes a metaphor for a device a shake might use to put limits on a disciple. After another graphic, Outra. Geously elaborated comparison of bread making with love making, he concludes, remember. The way you make love is the way God will be with you. For Rumi, the bread of every experience offers nourishment. Rough metaphors. Someone said, there is no dervish, or if there is a dervish, that dervish is not there. Look at a candle flame in bright noon sunlight. If you put cotton next to it, the cotton will burn, but its light has become completely mixed with the sun. That candlelight you can't find, is what's left of a dervish. 17 grams free. If you sprinkle one ounce of vinegar over 200 tons of sugar, no one will ever taste the vinegar. A deer faints in the paws of a lion. The deer becomes another glazed expression on the face of the lion. These are rough metaphors for what happens to the lover. There's no one more openly reverent than a lover. He, or she, jumps up on the scale opposite eternity and claims to balance it. And no one more secretly reverent. A grammar lesson. The lover died. Lover, is subject and agent, but that can't be. The, lover, is defunct. Only grammatically is the dervish lover a doer. In reality, with he or she so overcome, so dissolved into love, all qualities of doing this disappear. Bird wings. Your grief for what you've lost lifts a mirror up to where you're bravely working. Expecting the worst, you look, and instead, here's the joyful face you've been wanting to see. Your hand opens and closes and opens and closes. If it were always a fist or always stretched open, you would be paralyzed. Your deepest presence is in every small contracting and expanding, the two are beautifully balanced and coordinated as bird wings. Minus 74. I. Come before dawn. Muhammad says. I come before dawn to chain you and drag you off. It's amazing, and funny, that you have to be pulled away from being tortured, pulled out into this spring garden, but that's the way it is. Almost everyone must be bound and dragged here. Only a few come on their own. Children have to be made to go to school at first. Then some of them begin to like it. They run to school. They expand with the learning. Later, they receive money because of something they've learned at school, and they get really excited. They stay up all night, as watchful and alive as thieves. Remember the rewards you get for being obedient. There are two types on the path. Those who come against their will, the blindly religious people, and those who obey out of love. The former have ulterior motives. They want the midwife near, because she gives them milk. The others love the beauty of the nurse. 
The former memorizes the proof texts of conformity and repeats them. The latter disappear into whatever draws them to God. Both are drawn from the source. Any moving from the mover. Any love from the beloved. Checkmate. Borrow the beloved's eyes. Look through them and you'll see the beloved's face. 1.75 Everywhere No tiredness No jaded boredom I shall be your eye and your hand and your loving Let that happen And things you have hated will become helpers A certain preacher always prays long and with enthusiasm for thieves and mothers that attack people on the street Let your mercy Dear O Lord Cover their insolence. He doesn't pray for the good, but only for the blatantly cruel. Why is this? His congregation asks. Because they have done me such generous favors. Every time I turn back toward the things they want, I run into them, they beat me, and leave me nearly dead in the road. And I understand, again, that what they want is not what I want. They keep me on the spiritual path. That's why I honor them and pray for them. Those that make me return, for whatever reason, to God's solitude, be grateful to them. Worry about the others, who give you delicious comforts that keep you from prayer. Friends are enemies sometimes, and enemies friends. There is an animal called an usher, a porcupine. If you hit it with a stick, it ekagins its quills and gets bigger. The soul is a porcupine, made strong by stick beating. So a prophet's soul is especially afflicted, because it has to become so powerful. A hide is soaked in tanning liquor and becomes leather. If the tanner did not rub in the acid, the hide would get foul-smelling and rotten. The soul is a newly skinned hide, bloody and gross. Work on it with manual discipline, and the bitter tanning acid of grief, and will become lovely, and very strong. 76. If you can't do this work yourself, don't worry. You don't even have to make a decision, one way or another. The friend, who knows a lot more than you do, will bring difficulties, and grief, and sickness, as medicine, as happiness, as the essence of the moment when you're beaten, when you hear checkmate, and can finally say, with Halliday's voice, I trust you to kill me. A an awkward comparison. This physical world has no two things alike. Every comparison is awkwardly rough. You can put a lion next to a man, but the placing is hazardous to both. You say the body is like this lamp. It has to have a wick and oil. Sleep and food. If it doesn't get those, it will die, and it's always burning those up, trying to die. But where is the sun in this comparison? It rises, and the lamp's light mixes with the day. Oneness, which is the reality, cannot be understood with lamp and sun images. The blurring of a plural into a unity is wrong. No image can describe what of our fathers and mothers, our grandfathers and grandmothers, remains. Language does not touch the one who lives in each of us. 77. Two kinds of intelligence. There are two kinds of intelligence. One acquired, as a child in school memorizes facts and concepts from books and from what TNE teacher says, collecting information from the traditional sciences as well as from the new sciences. With such intelligence you rise in the world. You get ranked ahead or behind others in regard to your competence in retaining information. With this intelligence in and out of fields of knowledge, 
hitting always more marks on your preserving tablets. There is another kind of tablet, one already completed and preserved inside you. A spring overflowing its spring box. A freshness in the center of the chest. This other intelligence does not turn yellow or stagnate. It's fluid, and it doesn't move from outside to inside through the conduits of plumbing learning. This second knowing is a fountainhead from within you, moving out. Two ways of running. A certain man had a jealous wife and a very, very appealing maidservant. Her wife was careful not to leave them alone, ever. For six years they were never left in a room together. But then one day at the public bath the wife suddenly remembered that she'd left her silver wash basin at home. Please, go get the basin, she told her maid. The girl jumped to the task, because she knew that she would finally get to be alone with the master. She ran joyfully. She flew. And desire took them both so quickly that they didn't even latch the door. With great speed they joined each other. When bodies blend in population, spirits also merge. Meanwhile, the wife back at the bathhouse, washing her hair, what have I done? I've set the cotton wool on fire. I've put the ram in with the you. She washed the place so off her hair and ran, fixing her chador about her as she went. The maid ran for love. The wife ran out of fear and jealousy. There is a great difference. The mystic flies moment to moment. The fearful ascetic drags along month to month. But also the length of a day to a lover maybe 50,000 years. You can't understand this with your mind. You must first open. Fear is nothing to a lover, a tiny piece of bread. Love is a quality of God. Fear is an attribute of those who think they serve God, but who are actually preoccupied with penis and vagina. You have read in the text where they love and blends what he loves them. Those joining loves are both qualities of God. Fear is not. What characteristics do God and human beings have in common? What is the connection between what lives in time and what lives in eternity? If I kept talking about love, a hundred new combinings would happen, and still I would not say the mystery. The fearful aesthetic runs on foot, along the surface. Lovers move like lightning and wind. No contest. Theologians mumble, rumble dumble, necessity and free will, while lover and beloved pull themselves into each other. The worried wife reaches the door and opens it. The maid, disheveled, confused, flushed, unable to speak. The husband begins his five times prayer. The wife enters this agitated scene. As though experimenting with clothes, the husband holds up some flaps and edges. She sees his testicles and penis so wet, Semen still dribbling out, spurts of jism and vaginal juices drenching the thighs of the maid. The wife slaps him on the side of the head, is this the way a man prays, with his balls? Does your penis long for union like this? Is that why her legs are so covered with this stuff? These are good questions she's asking her, ascetic, husband. People who renounce desires often turn, suddenly, into hypocrites. Z-A-D-O The importance of G-O-U-R-D-C-R-A-F-T-I-N-G There was a maidservant who had cleverly trained a donkey to perform the services of a man. From a board, she had carved a planned device to fit on the donkey penis, 
to keep him from going too far into her. She had fashioned it just to the point of her pleasure, and she greatly enjoyed the